Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Welcome back to this YouTube channel on all things narcissism. This is an interesting channel. It's evolving in so many different directions because not only is it sort of the little nuggets that bounce around my little head, but also increasingly, this is a channel of your ideas. We get dozens, some weeks, 50 plus ideas for new videos and take those into sort of a long list and consider them all and many times many are asking for the same thing. It's such a pleasure to research the topics people are interested in and do more reading and look at the empirical literature and construct these videos on the basis of what you need on this topic. This is one of those sorts of crowdsource kinds of ideas. Today we're going to ask a very basic question that so many people wanted to know. Why would a narcissist get married? And before we answer that question, come on over, subscribe, because as you can see, I'm going to respond to your suggestions. Hit that subscribe button, hit that bell, and we'll take this on. So let's beg this question. Why on earth would a narcissist get married? Many of you married to narcissists thinking, well, why did they do this? Why did I do this? But more importantly, why would they do this? It's a very interesting question. Because when it comes down to it, it's really a bit paradoxical, but then again, it's not, which is why it's so complicated and why narcissists are actually drawn to something that they're really not made for. So let's break down some of the reasons we would think that a narcissist actually would probably never really be down with marriage. Narcissists tend to be novelty seekers. They are what we call reward sensitive, meaning that they like new shiny things and they just like, they like new things that are very rewarding from them. That's why they like to gamble and spend money. And marriage, I hate to say it, is sort of the opposite of novelty seeking. They also need lots of narcissistic supply. And the more varied the narcissistic supply for them, the better. They also don't tend to do well at intimacy, meaning that narcissists are not good at going deep, nor do they even really want true emotional closeness. They're looking for something more superficial. Narcissistic personalities tend to have contempt for people, for people's emotions, and for people's vulnerability. All of this together doesn't really seem to add up to the stuff of marriage, which is a very long, committed game. But on the flip side, there are other themes that can draw a narcissistic personality to marriage, even when it may not be the right path for them. I mean, let's face it, right or not, marriage is still very much viewed as a cultural expectation. And although we're seeing some deviation from this, around the world there's still a pressure to get married so that one can fulfill that family or cultural expectation and perhaps look good to the world. That's a very superficial motivation for a lifelong commitment, but it's congruent with the narcissist's insecure need to always fit in and always look good to the world. There is also a theme in narcissism that often gets overlooked. Now, although the narcissistic relationship cycle is classically characterized by, yeah, love bombing or idealization and then devaluation and then discarding, they also maintain an underlying fear of abandonment. Marriage may reassure their abandonment fears and may sort of give them that sense that they are in something permanent that can't leave them. It's on paper. I'm in a relationship, see? And a wedding can also play into their grandiose fantasies of putting on a show. And even, although we think of this as a gendered pattern, even narcissistic men can get caught up in the big wedding story. And while many people may wonder, why would a narcissist, with all their egocentricity, why would they want to take on the demands of a child or children? Once again, that desire to fill a role, to fill an expectation of what society wants for them, or to generate these little extensions of themselves, little mini-me's, or having an accessory in a baby. That's often some of the reasons that narcissistic individuals go into parenthood. You can't always carry the baby around in a carrier, just note to, note to you. Now, even though what we know about the narcissistic personality pattern does not bode well for marriage, they still regularly get married for all the reasons listed above and obviously for their own personal reasons. We can't list all of those out I and mean, everyone has their own personal reasons. And that right there is a big problem. Now marriage, the institution of marriage, whether you're a fan of it or not, 
is in fact consist, considered a rite of passage, a cultural requirement, a place that holds family. It clearly means very different things to different people. Most people in good faith do enter it with the assumption of it being a long-term commitment, perhaps even a lifelong term commitment, and as a place to develop a foundation for having children, sharing a life, and growing old together. The fact that narcissistic individuals are often unclear on their own motivations means that they are often not that clear on why they are even entering into marriage in the first place. Now, if you have married a narcissist, you may have been clear on your side about what you wanted, and that was, you know what you wanted, and that might have been children, it might have been the belief that you have shared values with someone, it may be to create connections to an extended family and community, it might be about growing something together, it may also have been feeling the pressure to be married because all your friends were getting married, whatever your thing was, it's why you signed up for this long-term lease. Now this lack of clarity around intention and motivation that plagues people who are narcissistic means that may, they may not understand, because they often don't understand their motivations, but they're not going to understand why they are entering into such a complex commitment. And that means that from the jump, you are not likely to be on the same page as a narcissistic spouse. Like I said, you may not even be fully clear on all of your motivations. They sure as heck aren't clear on theirs. Marriage is a lot of things. Some of the things it should be are commitment, consistency, compromise, compatibility, compassion, kindness, respect, shared values, empathy, reciprocity, intimacy, vulnerability, love, and sacrifice. These things on this list are not exactly a narcissistic personality's strong suits. Many people who marry narcissistic individuals are often on a lo long-term, even a lifelong journey of cognitive dissonance, one that manifests as constantly making excuses and justifications for other people making rationalizations, not just for other people, just to get to this wedding with this person and then to get through the marriage. Mistakes get made. You make the wrong assumptions. Once we finally get married, it's gonna be okay. Once his or her career settles in, it'll be okay. Once we have more money, it'll be okay. Once we have a child, he or she will fall in love with the baby and it will be okay. Once the kids finally grow up, it'll be okay. Once he or she retires, it'll be okay. It won't. And the only thing more difficult than surviving a marriage with a narcissist is divorcing one. Most people in narcissistic marriages, when they start doing the post-mortem on this relationship and trying to figure out exactly what went wrong, they see those red flags were there all along. And then that naive assertion that maybe getting to the marriage or getting the kids or getting the house would make it better was obviously a faulty rationale because the reasons for the narcissist getting married are never very clear. Obviously, the end of a marriage with a narcissist can look a few different ways. Although it may be painful at the time, I'm going to be frank with you based on what I've seen, the best ending is when they discard you and leave quietly. You, yes, yes, you will feel abandoned. But if you can get that, and on top of that, you don't have to fight for custody, you have won. You may get a bit financially clobbered, but avoiding that fight in the long term is the best thing that could happen to you psychologically. The alternative is like the greatest cage fight of your lifetime. Expensive, painful, torturous divorces that hurt everyone involved that can cost vast sums of money that damage the children that are caught in them that are refereed by court systems that are literally blind to these personality styles that's what the back end of this story looks like so if your narcissist actually moves on and replaces you with someone else yeah it's gonna hurt for a minute but you're also gonna see that marriage is just a way for them to control the next person too. 
it is not unusual for narcissistic individuals to be serial marriers. Their insecurity means that they prefer the sure thing quality of marriage and they also like the validation of a wedding and people saying, woo, you're engaged, we're so happy for you. The next marriage and the marriages they have after that will be equally devoid of closeness and empathy and intimacy the same way that your marriage was. Why? Because they're not really made for marriage. The rush to get married in our society in general and the societal pressure for marriage means that many people will often blind themselves to their partner's narcissism or overlook red flags. They don't even pay attention to their own partner's motivation for getting married. The enabling of society to cheerlead people to the altar, even when the relationship is not healthy, doesn't help when you're not sure on what is going wrong in this relationship and yet you still get married. Now, if you're seeing red flags, my advice is talk to someone who is or has gone through a divorce with a narcissist. Listen very carefully and take it in as a cautionary tale. I think marriage can be an extraordinary human experience when it is thoughtful, intentional, empathic, and collaborative. But a narcissistic marriage can turn you upside down and not only test your faith in love and all things associated with relationships, but can actually do a real number on your mental health. Just because someone wants to marry you doesn't mean it's a good idea. It's really important before you make this commitment, kick the tires and force yourself to speculate into what a future with this person might really look like. Take off the rose colored glasses and really speculate. Be clear on your motivations on why you want to get married because the challenge with the narcissist is you're never going to get clarity on what their motivations are. That's a long, long, long way of me telling you why do narcissists get married? Often for very superficial reasons that have nothing to do with the long-term staying power you need from a relationship. And let me also say this, because I think there are still many cultures in the world where marriage is still very much overseen by other people in a community and family members and people feel a pressure to sort of marry people who are on a short list of those who have been chosen for them. Folks in those situations are even more challenged because they, they may very well be dealing with a short list of narcissists and not even have the opportunity to really, again, do what I say, proverbially kick the tires and really think about, we actually pay more attention like, oh, well, this car lasts me five to 10 years. People need to make the same kind of conjecture about a spouse. Will this marriage be healthy in 20, 30, or 40 years? So why they get married? They get married for a, a false sense of safety, but they don't really want to do the work. And it is work to make a marriage work. But if both of you are on board, the work can be very rewarding and healthy. Just not going to happen with a narcissistic partner. Hope that answers the question. For those of you who are struggling with it, obviously this isn't giving you much comfort. You're like, well, this is all good and well, but I'm still suffering. And I get that. And hopefully some of this other content and books and information can really help you sort of sort some of that out. Thank you again for tuning in. As always, please hit that subscribe button. Welcome to this YouTube channel if you're not already a part of this community. As I said, a lot of these video ideas are very much crowdsourced. Drop your ideas here in the comments. Drop us an email. Let us know. We'd like to see a video on this topic. And then if it can turn into something that makes sense, absolutely we'll do it. Hit that bell also if you want notifications each time we put up new content. Thanks again. Bye.